Good afternoon. Uh, so I'm Jonathan Kay, uh, working for Laird Connectivity. Uh, today's talk, Laura One mixed with BLE, the perfect recipe for extending your cold chain applications. Uh, we'll look to go over kind of four key blocks within the talk today. One is to just discuss what do we mean by cold chain monitoring itself, uh, really look at why it's required, uh, the benefits of LoRa One for that use case, uh, and then really look at what the block looks like, what the architecture stack up looks like for LoRa One and cold chain. Follow that up with just some proof points, some touch points across the globe of actual use cases for cold chain monitoring using LoRa One. Uh, looking at applications from the US, from South Africa, and across Europe. Uh, and then finally, we're going to bring the BLE element into that LoRaWAN architecture. So just a little bit about what BLE itself is. Um, talking about the personal area network of BLE to the LP1 itself. Looking at some of the application benefits we can bring by adding BLE. And then finally, how does that extend cold chain outside of the in-building applications where we're seeing it now? Then a couple of last points on some workshops we're running upstairs, uh, and then close it out, hopefully, in the right amount of time. So the need for cold chain monitoring. Quite simply put, the two core use cases we found is around food safety and operational efficiency. So looking at how you monitor and control food storage at all aspects of the cold chain cycle itself. Automation of that, taking it away from being a pen and paper based system uh, and having full data logging and alerting. And what does that do for you and your business? It reduces the potential for human error, much improved and increased accuracy. Uh, it simplifies compliance recording and monitoring. Uh, it also reduces food waste, which is extremely costly, increases productivity, and then for the owners of that business, protects their brand. Uh, and then finally, you can store and aggregate a global data set together in a single place, ultimately all enhancing food safety for you and for your customers. Why LoRaWAN though? Food chain and cold chain monitoring has been done with a variety of wireless technologies over the years. So looking at it from uh, a perspective of LoRaWAN, you look at a restaurant, you look at different environments and the actual kitchen prep area where the food storage, where the kitchen, where the freezers and the fridges are, can be in any area of that building. They can be in the back here, they can be down in the bowels of the building, and you've got to be able to get that RF signal out of those environments. And then also, you think of any industrial kitchen environment, it is generally metal. You have a big metal box, you've got fryers, you've got fridges, you've got the walk-in uh, freezers themselves. RF and metal boxes are generally not too uh, friendly items. Um, you then need to get the sensing element and get that data out of that challenging RF environment. Uh, and ultimately, you don't want to have to be touching those sensors frequently. They need to be installed. They need to have a long life cycle. They need to be able to operate off battery so you can install them freely where you, you need them to be. So they don't need to be mains powered. Uh, and you don't want to change the batteries in them. Again, you need a low touch uh, operation, so very low power from your wireless technology. Uh, and how many sensors do you need for the environment? It's completely dependent on each kitchen and each customer. So it can be anywhere from a couple to five to 10, depending on each store or location. Um, and you, then you need to have full compliance logging. So if the network goes down, you need to be able to store the data on that device before you can get it back up and be able to retrieve it. So you can maintain complete compliance. Then out of the devices, you need to get the data wirelessly to something that can bridge it to IP to get it up to the cloud and the application servers where it can be turned into useful data for that operator. In terms of how does that look from a LoRa standpoint, uh, I don't really need to go into the details of this. You're the LoRa One experts yourselves, but effectively uh, you're seeing the, the fast food restaurants, hospitals, hotels, anywhere where you're looking at the cold chain monitoring for generally temperature and humidity. Uh, we have sensors that have those uh, IP65 rated sensors that use LoRa to then transmit that to local gateways. The local gateways then bridge to IP over either Wi-Fi or Ethernet through to your LNS, to the, the network server, um, whether that be TTI, et cetera, and then up into your application server where all of the gateway and device management and the actual application level sits. So that's the current typical LoRaWAN 
uh, architecture that we see for cold chain. And then in looking at this from actual customer perspective, so real deployments that are out there in the thousands and tens of thousands of devices and gateways. Uh, we'll look at three in particular, uh, Yuka in South Africa, Limetrics in Austria and across Europe, and then Compliance Mate based out of the US, but full global deployment of their solution. First of these is Yuka. Uh, what are they using it for? Uh, two core use cases for them. The first is around uh, perishable produce, mainly fruit uh, in particular. They're looking and are controlled by legislation within South Africa and across the uh, African region that they have to be able to log and come, uh, maintain compliance of export logs of how that food stuff has been uh, controlled in cold storage uh, facilities. And what they've been utilizing is some of our probes or external cabled probe temperature sensors into particularly fruit pulp to maintain the compliance of that pulp before it gets further processed uh, in the supply chain and then produced out. And Laura One, one of the things that they actually said was the greatest uh, improvement for them was how simple it was to cover a single cold storage facility with one or maybe two gateways, where traditionally the Zigbee-based networks that they previously utilized, they had to have a full mesh system with more and more devices to be maintained and rolled out. The second area where they've been utilizing gateways and LoRaWAN sensors and cold chain was for pharmaceutical. Uh, their brand is called EnviroSense. Um, they've been looking at using, again, 868 megahertz based gateways to cover entire facilities, uh, and then using integrated temperature and humidity sensors, transmitting that uh, information over LoRa to the gateway, and then back out to the, to the IP-based networks and their front-end portals. The second of these customer examples is Line Metrics uh, in Austria. Uh, they, they developed this lovely graphic, uh, which really goes from end to end uh, of the food chain. So really starting from farm to fork is the concept where you want to be able to log, track, trace, uh, and maintain compliance across all of that flow of the foods and services, uh, right the way from the farm all the way through to the point of sale. And you need that instant alarming for whenever there's deviations and at least logging of those deviations so you know whereabouts in the supply chain you potentially have a problem. And then finally, seamless documentation of that process. In the main, we've seen them using the, um, our sensors and services within particularly the point of sale area and also the warehousing. A little bit of growth in towards the transport uh, of the, the food materials, but we'll, we'll touch upon that a little bit later. Again, you'll see a very similar story to the prior one about Yuka, and you'll see it coming up with Compliance Mate, all about quality and safety and maintaining compliance within the food chain. So again, dispersing sensors within restaurants and catering facilities, measuring particularly uh, temperature and humidity again with integrated or external cabled probes. Uh, and again, pushing it up to real-time monitoring and alarming you know, the same overall kind of architecture, the same overall use case and application throughout. The same goes for the adjacent market of the pharmaceutical industry. It really doesn't, you know, it's slightly different standards, different levels of compliance, but the actual end use application is still being able to automatically log and measure, um, log and measure temperature and humidity of whatever that item may be whether it's in the, the food industry or whether it's in the pharmaceutical medicine storage industry. Finally, Compliance Mate. Uh, Compliance Mate, a US cloud-based company. Um, they have these rather fetching green uh, branded uh, sensors. Um, again, really food safety, kitchen operations, food service industry, so fast, uh, fast food service particularly, uh, quick serve restaurants. Um, and what they are doing is, is similar, really. It's a great uh, combination of hardware, software at the sensor and gateway level, but all of the intelligence, all of the business insight is on the server side and on the application side, which is the value that's being brought here. They're using the devices as a, just a great way to get the data they need to make useful business information for their customers. The, the devices themselves is simply a transport. The fact that it's using LoRaWAN in reality is not a key requirement for them. 
The key requirement for them is to get data robustly and securely out of these terrible, not terrible environments, harsh RF environments up into their, uh, into their servers and into their cloud applications to make it useful. The breadth of their portfolio is pretty wide, and it's, it's actually a little bit more extended than this, but just tried to make it pretty clean on the slide. Um, handheld Bluetooth probes, LoRaWAN enabled, uh, temperature, humidity, uh, potentially open closed, smoker probes, all using LoRaWAN as the backhaul technology. Routing it through the gateways, they have tablets and handheld devices to do spot checking as well. Again, all pushing it up into their cloud applications. And the value it, they're really seeing actual value of LoRaWAN through the fact that you know, some of these points we've touched on before, you've got challenging RF environments, challenging buildings and structural setups of those buildings. Uh, they, if you think of a walk-in refrigerator or freezer, it's a big, solid, thick metal block that you've got to be able to penetrate and get out, which is where LoRaWAN fits very, very nicely into that use case. Uh, and again, it's the information flow, it's compliance monitoring, it's food waste reduction and saving their end customers thousands of dollars by being able to get out in front of a problem before it can occur. So that's all well and good. We've talked a lot about LoRaWAN. What about the, the BLE side of that, the Bluetooth side? So the recipe works so far. LoRaWAN is, is perfect. It's working just nicely for Gold Chain. How can we improve that or how can we add a few additional layers to the, the benefit for the customer base? Well, we think there's a role here for, for Bluetooth or Bluetooth Low Energy. Now, we are slightly biased. Uh, Led, as a, Led Connectivity as a company have been working in Bluetooth for a decade, a decade and a half now, um, working with the Bluetooth standard from version 1 to where we are now at version 5.2. It is a global ISM band, 2.4 gig. Uh, it doesn't have some of the complexities or uh, regional certification challenges that a newer technology like LoRaWAN does uh, going across different frequency bands um, in 868 and 900 megahertz. It is completely ubiquitous. I'd be very surprised if anyone in this room has not used Bluetooth Low Energy or Bluetooth of any kind in the last week or so. Almost on a daily basis, you're probably interacting and using Bluetooth-enabled devices. They are in every mobile phone, every laptop, um, every uh, hands-free device for audio applications, all headsets. It's very, very low power. Coin cell operation is absolutely standard in what it was built on. Bluetooth Low Energy, when the spec for Bluetooth version 4, which is when Bluetooth Low Energy came into the Bluetooth specification, really was designed to change it from being a streaming-based protocol for audio applications into something that was state-based. So it was for either advertising data in small packets, which makes, again, this application of cold chain and just little temperature readings or humidity readings perfectly aligns with how Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy was developed. We'll touch upon in the next few slides about mobile applications. So how you use your phone as a, um, as a wireless display to your end device, because there is mobile apps in Android and in Apple to enable a nice, simple, clean, intuitive user interface to any remote device. We'll talk a little bit about advertising and beaconing, which is a concept of BLE, and also that enables locationing type technologies and capabilities on top of its ability to transfer data itself. And then coming in the specification now, you've got BLE Mesh looking to oppose something like Zigbee as a, uh, as a wireless transport for meshing of multiple devices. And actually now in Bluetooth version 5.2 that was announced in the last month, you're now gonna get LE audio, so an even more enhanced audio experience uh, over Bluetooth low energy that was not previously possible. For us, it's the ideal pan personal area network to LoRa's low power WAN. So bridging that pan to the WAN itself. As usual, there's an app for that. Uh, so this is an example of the mobile app that we have, again, in Android uh, and in Apple devices for configuring the sensing elements, configuring the LoRa WAN parameters of the LoRa and BLE enabled devices that we have. 
So already in the field and in use is LoRa and BLE enabled devices. You can use a mobile phone app to do the configuration to set any of the sensing elements. Uh, pretty much anything that you could do over the LoRa network, you can do locally from a mobile phone. Again, with that simple intuitive user interface that you have from a mobile app. That goes all the way into things such as firmware update and even local graphing and display of the information. So you can have LoRaWAN sending the temperature data over the, the wide area. And you can even use BLE locally so you can have a local spot display or spot source of information for the data coming from the devices. The next point I think is really where we see some of this moving to and particularly where we can increase the scope uh, of wireless cold chain monitoring. So traditionally or, or mainly at the moment, it's been in-building for the applications our customers have used our sensors for, really looking at in those, you know, those fridges, the freezers, in the pharmaceutical environments, medicine storage, in the quick serve restaurants, all generally in building. But there is a case to be made that you can extend that cold chain into transportation. You can move it into the mobility section by adding Bluetooth low energy sensors into a bridged LoRaWAN network. So we've developed a, a range of different sensing uh, devices that use Bluetooth 5, 5 coded Phi, which is a way to extend the range of traditional Bluetooth far beyond what that could be done previously. So you can have a small network of these very, very low power coin cell driven sensing devices in the actual transportation cold chain, bring that into the building, bridge them to LoRaWAN, LoRaWAN then up to the IP or the wider area. So, just to try and put that against a architecture document. So we took exactly the same stack up as we did previously, but really just extended a little bit further out into the mobility section, using Bluetooth 5 to cover the transportation of the, the food and the food materials through then into the next stage of the, the farm to fork, into the actual processing and into the point of sale. Or you could even go straight and bridge it, you know, to be all fair, without using LoRaWAN to have a different routed network of devices straight from the cold chain up over LTE or over Ethernet or Wi-Fi, or you can then simply build it into your existing LoRaWAN network itself. So again, LoRaWAN is a great fit for cold chain applications, particularly in building, but can you just keep extending that cold chain further and further out by building in Bluetooth low energy into this uh, what we feel is a perfect recipe for cold chain monitoring. Uh, it's not just me stood here talking up here. Uh, we have a workshop which is actually coming up next, uh, which is we had one yesterday. It's a little bit abbreviated, to be honest, from where we wanted to be because uh, we had a, a few issues, which you'll learn about if you go to the workshop. But this is taking advertising data from Bluetooth beacons it is then using our Bluetooth LoRaWAN uh, modules or our embedded, uh, embedded sensor devices. It's using that to sniff the advertising data, picking up those packets of data, putting that into a LoRaWAN packet, pushing that over to a gateway, gateway then up to the cloud into an application server. Uh, everybody gets the development kits, everybody gets the application source code that shows how this has been done. And then you could play with adding BLE into your own LoRaWAN networks and see whether that would work for you in your applications. Finally, touch on the cheesy side, but uh, if you don't believe me, everyone should believe Sheldon Cooper. This is a quote from the Big Bang Theory that everything is better with Bluetooth, even LoRaWAN. Thank you very, very much for your time. Uh, that's my talk of LoRaWAN mixed with BLE for cold chain applications. Thank you very much, Jonathan Kay. Uh, before we go to some questions from the audience, perhaps. Happily uh, take any questions. Yes. Um, what are the experience with the ice bar outside? Because I see this ice bear and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what can people do there? Uh, they can see what it's like to be a cold chain sensor in a, a low temperature environment. It's taking the, the temperature there and then. It's pushing it through local gateways over TTN displaying it on an all talks dashboard where they're, they're simply showing the outputs from all those different sensors. So just giving a, a real use case of what it'd be like in a cold chain environment. And afterwards Plus you get uh, hot chocolate, right? There is hot chocolate, and I believe there may be some extra little, I don't know, surprises in the afternoon. Uh, well, yeah, we're, gonna, we're not going to disclose the, the surprise? I, I have no idea, but our friends at TTN will, uh, will provide it later. OK. 
Okay, they will. Any questions from the audience, please, for Jonathan? Uh, no. Well, thank you very much. Okay. I think there was oh, one. There was one. Oh, sorry. You're a bit in the dark, so uh, please stand up so we can see you. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, two questions. Uh, first question is, um, especially in the pharmaceutical area, uh, let's say once a year you have to recalibrate these devices in your setup. How would that work? Um, would you do that? Or do we so have to send them back to a lab? Or what's the scenario? In the main, we've been working with our partners that have the business intelligence for those verticals that they've been looking at the calibration aspects of that. We can then work with them, but we don't directly take them back and do the recalibration. Again, the partners that we work with would organize that. And the second question would be, um, you showed that black Bluetooth device that's in the truck. Uh, if this will go back, give me one sec. Yeah, this one. Yeah. So I understand it works like a logger. There's no connectivity. It records, let's say, a thousand recordings. And then it sends those, once it reaches the shop, to the Bluetooth gateway? Yes. So and this the, the black one at the bottom is bridging Bluetooth 5 coded 5 from the sensors into the gateway, okay. it then takes that up and actually this device is uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, it's running embedded Linux and then we have AWS Greengrass sitting on top of that with some edge analytics inside it and then that's pushing it up to AOS IoT core and into the application. So, so, so I'm wondering once I have let's say 1,000 or 2,000 temperature measurements and then I want to forward that via LoRa, is, can I send that much data over LoRa? Uh, well, it depends how many you're combining up and how you stack it up. You can store data on the devices and then push them up over a wider area gateway at the bottom. The lower one would be just little pieces of information. It's not a big stream data protocol. It is possible, though. Any other questions for Jonathan? Three, two, one. Thank you very much. <laughs>